Hello YouTube, this is Prepper Princess, the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you are interested in purchasing my book, I will go ahead and leave a link down in the description box below. We are testing out a new microphone today, so let me know how it goes. One of those fancy dancy microphones that I need to get used to. I, uh, I would like to know if it's better than my standard microphone because I get a lot of complaints about noise frequencies. So anyway, let me know in the comments. So today I want to talk to you about frugality and how it pertains. It's pretty much financial efficiency is what frugality is. And after doing this for so long, it's been 15, 20 years that I've been debt free and living on a dime and saving every penny, pinch a penny till it screams, um, finding different new ways of entertainment instead of ways that cost money. You know, uh, what's the word? Um, just doing different things with food to learn how to make very nutritious, filling, hearty, uh, delicious, healthy meals for cheap purging and getting rid of things that I no longer serve, that do not serve a purpose in my life and honestly never did. And trying to come up with new phrases, new things. And, and I'm always thinking about my YouTube channel and how I can try and get this message across. Uh, people often say, don't buy it, you don't need it. Well, I have a little bit of a different philosophy on that. And that is that um, I don't buy it because I don't want it. Now, don't buy it, you don't need it, is like, do you really even want it? I mean, think about it long term. Do you really even want it? 10 years from now, where is that item going to be? It's going to be in a dumpster somewhere, most likely. I mean, how many items, how many trophies do you have from middle school on your basketball team or your baseball team or soccer team, chess club, debate team? How many trophies do you still have that you proudly display in your home not in a box somewhere in a storage unit in the garage up in the rafters like you display your middle school trophies uh in your living room to your friends and family I would have to say almost no one so it's the same thing with just about any object that is purchased is that I'm not going to proudly display it in my home in fact my display case is pretty much every item I own and if they all disappeared I wouldn't be I wouldn't be the slightest bit I'd be like oh well that sucks but I I wouldn't it it would not be a big deal for me <laughs> I mean I've got some paperweights and a canvassed piece of artwork that looks like my book it's not even my book <laughs> it's just it's a display that I used to use in the background of some of my videos I've got Simba's ashes. Who would want to steal my dog's ashes? I don't know. But if they did, I'd be like, well, earth, to earth she has returned. But it's the same when it comes to buying new items. It's not just don't, don't buy it, you don't need it. It's like, I'm not going to buy it because I don't even want it. I used to have like 20 pairs of jeans and only like one or two fit, fit well. They fit comfortably. They would look good, but they were very uncomfortable. So I finally just said, you know what? Forget it. I'm just, I have two pairs of pants now. I have two pairs of, of jeans and one pair of fancy pants. So if I had to go to a job interview, a funeral, or a wedding, I'm just going to wear my fancy pants and a blazer. I have a blazer in my closet. And I don't really do, I don't do weddings. <laughs> I don't like weddings. So I, I don't go to them. I do show my support, but I don't go to weddings. But I will go to a funeral out of respect for somebody. But my, even most of the funerals that I go to are like dress casual. You know, we're celebrating their life. We're not mourning their death. You know, we're going to have a barbecue and talk about stories. That's how we do it in my family and with my friends. It's just the way that we are. So I don't have any fancy clothes. Anyway. So I want to talk to you about financial efficiency. That's not frugality. That's not... When frugality comes up, people always think deprivation. They think they're being deprived. Like, you're not allowed to buy something. <laughs> you know, no, you don't You don't need... I'm, I'm having my kitchen slowly, slowly remodeled. And it's like, um, you don't need it, you don't want it, whatever. I do need a kitchen, but... 
technically I could live with it the way it is, but it would be hideously, horribly ugly. Um, I digress. I apologize. Financial efficiency. So let's talk about some things. So let's go over the, the bills that most people have. Okay. You've got your rent and your mortgage. And almost every bill that you have is negotiable in some way or another at some period in time or another. So let's talk first and foremost about rent. Now, we all know that rent has exploded all over the country. There are still places in the country where you can get rent for five, six hundred dollars. People don't want to, people say, I, I don't want to live there. Well, that's fine. Then you want your expensive apartment more than you want financial security. And that is your choice. It's not the choice that I would make, but it is your choice. If you're not willing to move, you're not willing to save money. And again, that's fine. You can spend what you make and uh, you limit your choices in other areas of your life if you choose to do that. And then when it comes to like a mortgage, when interest rates are low, which they're not right now, but when interest rates were low, a lot of people had the option to refinance at a lower mortgage rate and they chose not to. I don't have time. I'm too busy. I don't know how, you know, I'm not willing to make a phone call to the bank to find out that was your choice. And that's your choice. A lot of people choose to live in houses that are much, much bigger than they need. And they want to live in fancy neighborhoods uh, with good schools, walking trails, parks, sidewalks, and bicycle lanes and all that good stuff in large urban areas. And that's fine and dandy if you have the money to do so, which most people don't. Most people don't have the money to do that, so they mortgage their lives out instead. <laughs> and again, you've made the choice. You have made the choice to live in the area with good schools and a high class community and high mortgages, your choice. There are still places available for $100,000 or less. Some are in good areas, some are not in good areas. Again, your choice. I am, I am constantly looking for new properties because it's what I want to do. <laughs> if, if I have the spare money, I will buy another property. But I see things all the time. Uh, you can look in, uh, just as an example. So a long time ago, about five, five, six, seven years ago, Joshua Tree, California was like, you could get a house for $10,000. I mean, it was ridiculous. And a lot of these, a lot of people are moving out of the San Diego, Los Angeles areas, moving further eastward towards the borders of California, Nevada, and Arizona. And so Joshua Tree has become extremely expensive. The only thing you can, you can't really even get a low plot, like a, an acre of land there for very cheap, but it used to be you could get an acre for $500 or less. Not so much the case anymore because it's becoming gentrified and people are moving more and more eastward from Joshua Tree. So there is this place. I used to live in Bullhead City, Arizona. That's where my rental property is. And I bought that house for 67000 And now you can't get a single wide for 67000 there anymore. But there are areas in the vicinity where you can still get deals. So Needles, California. Needles, California is right on the Colorado River. It's the area right between California and Arizona. And it is run down. I'm not going to lie. But if you look at it this way, it is right on Route 66. I saw yesterday a duplex for sale for like 85000 Yes, it needed work, of course. It was right on the main road, Route 66. And I'm just looking at this thing and I was thinking to myself, I'm not going to buy it right now. But think about this. If you were to move into that duplex, $85,000, live in one side, rent out the other as an Airbnb because it's right on Route 66 on the I-40 headed straight to Las Vegas from California. It's a really busy thoroughfare and you could potentially live in your house and just do Airbnb on the other half and you could make that into a legitimate business. 
each side was about 600 square feet and um again needed work mostly cleanup but there were no pictures of the inside but um uh, that's an option that's an option there are also places in where is it uh golden valley which is about a half an hour from bullhead city laughlin and laughlin has a lot of casinos and big shows and there are lots of places there where occasionally you'll find an acre or two for two to three thousand dollars occasionally sometimes sometimes it's more like you can only buy it in a five acre increment for ten thousand dollars but there's a lot of acres out there and there's nothing in golden valley but golden valley is right between kingman and bullhead city laughlin so it's right between the colorado river and a bigger town route 66 that has hospitals vets all that stuff and you can get lots of land there like not lots of well you can get lots of land but land lots is what I meant for the $2,000 range. And there are also a lot of places. This I've seen it. So driving on I-40, I see all the time single wides that just people come up with spray paint and they put free, take me. I've looked inside some of these. Now, usually you're thinking, okay, everything's broken. Well, <laughs> I don't know. But one of them I stopped and I looked inside. I had no way to tow it. But the only thing it was missing was the front door. <laughs> you know, you can get a front door for $100 but and then just fence it in. But I'm like, okay, I buy an acre of land for $2,000. I pay $1,000 to get this thing towed. That's $3,000 for a house and an acre of land. And then, of course, you can build up from there. But people always buy, you know, people look at these half million dollar homes and they don't think outside the box. And this area is, I mean, think if you had acreage, you could get ATVs, you could even start a business, an ATV touring business out on your own property, looking at the mountains, taking them to, what is that place with the donkeys, the burrows in the, in the city? I call it the Santa Cruz of the desert, or, or starts with an O. I used to live there and I can't even remember. <laughs> went there for three I went there for three years but thinking outside about in like I said Golden Valley doesn't have a lot but the neighboring cities do so you're looking at good schools you're looking at uh, parks at the river casinos movie theaters you're looking at stuff for people to do stuff people with families so look outside the box those and that's just like a couple of little examples look a couple of little tiny examples there are they are spread everywhere across the U.S. in every single state. I see them all the time, everywhere. Florida, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina. I've seen them in Idaho, Utah, you name it. They're all over the United States, everywhere. So don't think that those two little places I talked about in Needles, California and Golden Valley, Arizona are like the only ones. They are all over the country, literally everywhere. So you have to think outside the box if you want to live a frugal lifestyle, if you not frugal, if you want to live an extremely low income type lifestyle. I mean, you can have a higher income and live on a low income. But I always have these dreams of doing that, like getting an acre or two and just parking a single wide on it and then just building a little fence around it and having one of my e-bikes and riding to town and that would be like my and I would just get some solar panels and set up a little tiny solar system and have a composting toilet and an outdoor shed. Like it, I just set up these little tiny things in my head and I'm like, that's doable. Like if I were in really, really dire straits or I needed a home base, is let's say I wanted to be an RVer, I wanted to travel in my you know camper van, my minivan, and I wanted a home base, I could do that and it would be so inexpensive to do it. And one of the fun things that I always thought... I will, I'll do this someday. I promise I will try and do this someday. I'm going to buy a total fixer upper and I'm going to decorate it and design it and fix it and repair it and upgrade it in everything garbage. Yep. Except for maybe like a bucket of mud, <clears throat> not mud. It's called, people call it mud, but you know what I'm talking about. Someday I'm going to do that. I'm going to buy a house and fix it up in all thrift store, found by the side of the road, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist free, free cycle, and I'm going to do the whole thing 
in that, with a few exceptions, you know, mattresses and stuff. But you'll see. That's going to be really interesting. You know, I decorated this entire house in garbage. <laughs> I think it would be really great. So look outside the box. So rent and mortgage is people's biggest thing. And even with a single wide, you could probably rent out some of that space. So the next one is medical insurance. So medical insurance, um, yes, I believe everybody should have it. I don't currently have it right now because I'm going through my options. I'm choosing it. I'm taking my time choosing it. Now look, I'm getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of hate about not having medical insurance. I want you all to know it's only temporary, okay? And I also want you all to know I've only been to the doctor one time in my twice in my adult life. Once was for stitches. This the other time was for a checkup. Okay, I've only been there twice in my adult life to the doctor, hospital, you name it. I'm very careful. I'm not accident prone. I'm very defensive when I drive. I'm very, and I don't even drive that often. Okay, and I know that accidents happen. I know my appendix could burst. I could have a heart attack. I get that. It's temporary. Okay, it's only for a few more months. But uh, medical insurance, you can go to .gov. You can go to healthplans.com.com. You can do, go to health, health care. Well, that's California healthcare, but healthcare.gov um, in order to check for cheap medical insurance. If you are disabled, you already have the free medical. If you are low income, you more than likely already have low income where you pay $100 for a family of four, where I pay $520 for one. I pay 20 to 30 times more than you do. Um, because I don't qualify for any low income medical insurance, but make sure that like, make sure that you do qualify for those things and look into it. And I used to judge people who went without medical insurance. I no longer do that because I no longer, I do not have it right now. And people, um, I no longer look at people like that with irresponsibility. I don't think it's irresponsible. I think that the medical, even if I am fully insured, fully insured, I can still lose everything if there's a medical accident, if something bad happens. Doesn't matter if I have insurance or not, I can still go bankrupt. So I don't, I honestly don't even, I've heard so many stories from different people who are like, I was a millionaire. I had five rental properties. I lost it all when I had a heart attack and I was fully medically insured. So it can happen to anybody. Uh, but check out healthcare.gov. Uh, property insurance. So yeah, you can't really, you have to pay your property insurance. Oh, insurance. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about taxes. Property insurance. So um, I have my property insurance and car insurance through AAA. AAA is the cheapest available in almost all the states. I've, I've come, people have told me that it's not cheaper where they live if, but in the, it seems like the common denominator is any start state that starts with the letter M, Minnesota, Michigan, Mississippi, anything, any Montana, Maine, like any state that starts with the letter M, AAA is not the cheapest, but it still might be a good idea to call and give it a give it a good check. Now, I have liability only on my car, and the house is insured against fire, earthquakes, stuff like that. Now, I live in California, so we get wildfires and earthquakes, which I'm not super worried about. Uh, just because based on my location. Yes, I am near forests, national forests, and everything like that. But I'm in the middle of town. Not that that's like a huge difference, but I'm hoping that the other buildings will slow down the fire, I guess, if there ever is one. And earthquakes, I, I mean, they happen all the time, all the time here. But yeah, uh, so my property insurance and it, I think my property insurance and car insurance comes out to, but it's, I have my rental property with them too. Uh, comes out to 2800 for both houses and car. So, or maybe it was 2300 for a full year. And I always pay one year at a time. Um, so the car. All right. Gone are the days where you could get a beater car for 1500 bucks. Those days are gone. A beater car now is $6,000. So... 
And as you all know, I the the more I get into the e-bikes, the less and less I drive. I went a four month period, December, November, December, January, February, March. I went five months on a tank. Five months on a tank of gas. And then I filled up. That was December 24th to March 23rd. No. Sorry, three months. Six months. Three months on a tank. And I filled up March 23rd. As I'm filming this, it's now May. And I still have more than half. May? June. <laughs> it's, it's June. Still have more than half a tank left. So... Obviously, using less gas is what is going to make your gas bill go down. So start thinking outside the box. Alternative stuff, bicycle, e-bike, e-scooter. Scooters, from what I understand, they go like 15 miles and they go 18 miles an hour. Now, I'm more comfortable on a bicycle because it feels like a motorcycle, but I'm considering getting a scooter, a stand-up scooter, to see how that would work because they're half the weight of a bicycle and I could stick one in the trunk of my car. So let's say I want to go to the beach and I want to go exploring. Let's say it's Santa Cruz or that really the the one in LA that nobody goes to anymore because it's been taken over by homeless people. But let's say I want to go and walk on that path and it's like a mile and a half long path and it's like I don't want to keep going back and forth and I could just pull out my scooter out of my trunk and just go and go. Fun. I think to me that sounds fun, but it's time to start looking into alternative things. Now, what I used to want to do was buy an old Mercedes diesel car, like from the seventies and then (laughs) make my own biodiesel and have a biodiesel buddy in my garage and make my own fuel. And I thought that would be awesome. And that is awesome. It's only, it'll only cost you about a dollar a gallon to make your own gas out of used vegetable oil and putting it in a biodiesel engine, a dollar a gallon. I think that's awesome. However, it's a lot less hassle just to buy an (laughs) e-bike. I mean, it's a lot less hassle just to buy an e-bike. And the majority of trips that we take in our car are within a walk, within two miles, it's a walkable distance to the library, fire department, police department, post office, grocery store, normal a park where you can play frisbee or go fishing or walking or hiking or biking it's it's all within walking distance (laughs) except unless you're just commuting to work which is 30 miles away which is totally different uh yeah so you've got lots of expenses that come with a car it's not just the car it's not just the gas you've got your car note you know you've got to pay off the bill and the average is like I think it's up to like $700 a month now. It's insane how much cars are now. It's like $50,000 for the cheapest new car. You've got your car note. You've got gas, insurance, registration, maintenance. And it all adds up to like $1,000 a month, which is crazy. So I love used cars. Now, I am a 90s and early 2000s type person. People laugh at me that I drive my dream car, and my dream car is a 98 Toyota Camry. Now, I thought that my dream car was a 2015 Toyota Corolla, so I got one, and I didn't like it. I liked my 98, so I had the Corolla for a couple years, and I sold it for a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit more than I paid for it. I mean, like a tiny bit, because the the in the car prices went through, they skyrocketed, they went through the roof. Uh, so I sold it at a technically a profit, technically. Um, but I still have my 98 Camry that I paid $4,000 for. It still has less than 90,000 miles on the odometer. So the engine is 25 years old and it's barely gotten broken in. But there are some great deals to be had. Now, don't be afraid to look at older cars if they have low mileage. I saw a 2007, I believe it was a Honda Accord or a Honda Civic, that was a 2007, so that's 16 years, 16 years old. It had less than 80,000 miles on it. It was garage kept. It's a hybrid. It gets like 45 miles to the gallon. Gorgeous on Craigslist for about 8,000 bucks. Now, 8000 bucks sounds like a lot, but again, a new car is going to put you back $50,000, and 
and long gone are the days where you can get a beater car for $1,500. You can't trade a case of beer and a lawnmower for a car anymore. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. So I would say save up and look in the $8,000 range. And remember, the older your car, the less the registration and insurance costs. So when you buy a newer car, it's not only the gas and the, the car note. The, the newer your car is, the more it costs to have. Because the DMV is going to charge you crazy. It's like $700 a year in registration if you have a Tesla. I mean, don't quote me on that. It depends on where you live. But And then you've got car insurance. So even if you have liability only, your car insurance is crazy sky high. My car insurance is like 50 bucks a month for my Camry. If that, it's less than that. It's like 400 and then my car registration, because I live in California, it was $250 for the year. But when I was in Arizona, it was $250 for five years. So keep in mind that the older your car is, you know, it dep- it does depreciate in value. But as long as it has low miles and it's like a reliable brand, Toyota, Honda, Subaru, can't go wrong with those. And then we've got next is the cell phone. So as you all know, I have Mint Mobile. I've had Mint Mobile for about three years. I pay $15 a month for five gigs. And a lot of people, when when I give them my Mint Mobile affiliate link, which I'll leave in the description box, it's in the description box of all my videos. But they say it's not $15 a month. It's only $15 introductory rate and then it goes up. No, if you if you pay for a full year, at a time, it's fifteen. It comes out to fifteen a month plus tax. So, instead of signing up for a month or three months, sign up for a year, and it'll be fifteen dollars a month for the whole year. And then, when you can also put it on auto renew, and if you do that and you have it on auto renew, it renews at the fifteen dollar rate. So, I have every year I I put in the SIM card, I set it up for auto pay, auto renew, and it's been fifteen bucks a month ever since. And they charge you one year at a time. That's the quote unquote catch. But the funny thing is, is that it's less than $200 and most people pay more than $100 a month for their cell phone. So what you're getting for a year, most people get out of two months worth of service. So, and then if you're not big on Mint Mobile, which uses the Verizon network, um, I don't know, AT&T has Cricket. So Cricket, AT&T is like, 80 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month. Cricket is the exact same service for $30 a month. And then another one done by Verizon is Boost Mobile. Boost Mobile is $10 a month, but you only get one gig of data. Now, the majority of my data is linked to my Wi-Fi at my house. So I'm not really using, I'm using it. I'll use it for maps mostly, excuse me. Or if I'm on a long walk and I want to hear a song, like, what song do I want to hear? <laughs> Crimson and Clovers by the Pom Pom Squad. There you go. All right, so cell phone. So don't go with the major brands. Don't go with AT&T, Verizon, Sprint. Go with their subsidiaries, the ones that go under them, and they use their service. It's so much cheaper. And my Mint Mobile, I love my Mint Mobile. 15 a month, 5 gigs. I, it's got everything I need calls and calls and all that good stuff. So again, try it. Don't be afraid to try new things. It don't, everything is negotiable. Your cell phone bill where you're paying $120 a month, you can get it for $20 a month somewhere else. It's negotiable. It is. Internet. So I used to work for Comcast slash Xfinity, if you all are aware of Comcast is Xfinity. So I used to work for them a long time. I worked in the retention department, which is where all the angry customers come and yell at you before they quit your service and you get yelled at all the time. And your job is to try to not only calm them down, but to keep them as a customer. So what was the way that we kept them as a customer? Hey man, why don't you quit yelling at me for a second? Because I'll give you more for less. How's that? Does that sound good? You're upset at the bill. (gasps) Let's bring your bill down. Oh, you don't like that you don't get enough service? Let's give you more service. So that's how Comcast works. There's also another thing where people would call in and say, hey, I need to cancel my service. It's just gotten too expensive. Okay. 
then there's very specific words that they have to use, very specific. Okay, I'll cancel your service. Click, it's canceled. But if somebody calls in and says, I want to cancel my service, it's too expensive. Do you have anything that's not advertised that's maybe a slower speed and is like super cheap? Yes, we do. We do have an unadvertised one. It's only $25 a month. How fast is it? Oh, it's only 12 gigs. Well, I don't know if you all know this, but a full streaming device, in order to get 4K quality HD, you only need 8 gigs. 8. But the slowest one that they offer is 12. So, if you get the slowest one that they offer, they don't even offer it, the slowest unadvertised one that they have for 12 gigs, you can stream up to three TVs and run your internet on your computer and play on your cell phones till the cows come home with no problem. Now, I am on the Comcast slash Xfinity unadvertised thingamajig. Here in my area, and it, it depends, the price is going to depend on where you live. Here where I live, the cheapest one I think you can get is $80. I pay 55 because I asked for the unadvertised lower speed, lower priced offer. I upload YouTube videos. I play on the internet. I have nothing but streaming services. I get 4K quality, HD, UHD, ultra def, high def TV. And I use it for streaming. So make sure you ask for the unadvertised stuff. Because, and you have to be very specific with your words. You can't just say, I want to cancel my service because it's too expensive. You have to say, hey, I'm thinking about canceling my service because it's too expensive. Unless, do you have something that's not advertised, that's cheaper, maybe a little bit slower that I can look into? And if if they are, now, I, I hate, I'm sad to say this. There's not a lot of representatives who are intelligent enough to know that this is even something that they offer. So, Make sure you get an associate that has been there a while. In fact, when you get them on the phone and you ask their name and they say, hey, my name's Jake. Hi, Jake. How long have you been working for where you work for Comcast or whatever internet company you're talking? How long have you been working there? Oh, you've been there a year. Perfect. Perfect. Let's talk. Let's be buddies. All right. <clears throat> so moving on down the line. I hope you all enjoy this chillaxed thing. This I think that this microphone is making me more relaxed. I want to do some beatboxing. Okay, that's... I'm not... Uh, no. <laughs> no, Prepper Princess. Don't do that. Stop it. Okay. But it does make me... Re I really want to slow down my talking in front of this microphone. I'm kind of digging it. Very chill. Okay, so let's... Oh, hello, microphone. Hi. What brings you to this side of town? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. All right, let's chill. All right. So, there's the internet. Now, let's talk about cable. Cable. Now, I don't know if you all know this. I love TV. I love it. Oh, Internet, same thing with my internet at my rental property. So I pay for internet at my rental property as part of the mm, rental agreement. $37.99 there because I asked for the silver speed. All right. So <clears throat> streaming services. So I love TV. TV is my favorite thing. It always has been. I have a 65 inch. I have my dream TV. It's a 65 inch. That's crazy. Someday I'll, I'll probably end up with an 80 inch when they start becoming $500 or less because I love TV. I, and it's not that I love TV. I love the background noise that it is. It's in, even if, even if I'm not watching TV, I will have a rainforest on like a screensaver type thing. And you can go to YouTube and type in whatever you want. You can type in aquarium, rainforest, desert, waterfall, <laughs> stormy weather, ASM, AMS, A, the one, the ASR, ASMR, oh my gosh, and then whatever you want, and it'll come up, and it's gorgeous, I love having that stuff on the background, and it, it's really great for falling asleep too, if you want to fall asleep to rain sounds, but I like having something on in the background, 
Um, maybe it's because I just, it's just me and the dogs, but I really need some noise in the background. Other than a neighbor's dogs barking. So streaming services. So a lot of people have Amazon, Netflix, and Hulu, like in Disney Plus, Paramount Plus. Those are like the big ones, right? And I like them. They're, you know, cool. Um, but here's the thing. So it's hard to explain. For starters, Amazon Prime. So Amazon, if even if you're an Amazon Prime member and you go to the Amazon website on your TV, they have free movies on Amazon and you don't have to be a Prime member. Now, there's some movies you're not going to get, obviously. But Amazon has a lot of free movies and they do it. And it says on Amazon, it says free with ads from Freebie. F-R-E-E-V-E-E. So I was like, what is this freebie? So I went on to my Roku, my Roku TV, because I, I have Roku boxes in my Arizona house, but this is an actual Roku, Roku TV, so it's built in. I don't even need a box. But um, so I type in what's, you know, freebie, and then it an ad, uh, an app comes up, and then I install the app, and I get thousands of movies on freebie, and then on Pri- Amazon Prime, and then there are so many apps. There's the Roku channel. My, I'll just go over a few of my favorites. The, my favorites are the Roku channel, Freebie, Pluto TV, and Tubi. Those are my favorites. But there's a million more, and I'm telling, oh my gosh, there, there's Filmrise, Freeflix, Stir, Haystack News, the list, Fossum TV. All of those apps, each one of those apps have thousands of movies and television shows. Now, I know I remember Amazon Prime, the free part, the free part of Amazon Prime um, has every episode of Little House on the Prairie and the one that came after Little House with the, the family that lived up in the mountains during the Great Depression. Something about living on a hillside it had like parents and 10 kids or something. The Waltons. That's what it was. The Waltons. It has every episode of Little House on the Prairie and the Waltons. Think about this. There's 20 episodes per, I, I mean, I don't know exactly how many episodes. There's 20 episodes per season of Little House on the Prairie. I think they have six or seven seasons. So let's say six, six. I'm sure there's more than six, but Six seasons of 20 episodes is 120 episodes that are an hour each. That's 120 hours of viewing for free. And that's only one. Then you've got the Waltons, another six season, and another bazillion hours of watching for free. And they also have the entire, like all of these free apps, they also have all, every episode of Ancient Aliens, every episode of Unsealed Alien Files, Pluto TV has The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, and Star Trek. I mean, these are not just like bad TV shows or bad movies. These are awesome, amazing movies and amazing episodes. Like, it's all great programming. Haystack News is what I watch because uh, Haystack News not only does international and national, they also do local. So if I want the Sacramento news, or if I were in my Arizona place and I wanted Las Vegas news or Phoenix news, it doesn't matter where you live. It's all local. So, you know, people talk about they want local TV and then PBS is a free app, PBS Kids. So if you have kids, PBS Kids is like all cartoons all the time. Not really. I I take that back. It's like the learning, like Sesame Street type stuff. So um, paying for cable in this day and age. And and also people are now these streaming apps are starting to pull up the sports. They're starting to bring in sports. And some of the apps are like five, ten dollars a month, something like that. So if you are paying one hundred and fifty dollars for cable and you've been keeping it all these years because of the sports, we're getting to a point now where you may be able to pay ten dollars a month for a specific app, and that specific app will have all of your sports, your football, baseball, basketball, whatever. Now I watch. I, I used to have NFL highlights, but I don't watch sports, so um, I don't really know. Well, I don't really know that much about it, but 
the sports is what keeps most people on cable. And my brother was telling me that the apps are starting to pick up the sports. So pretty soon, sports are not even going to be available on regular cable. <laughs> and also, if you have regular cable and your sports are coming in on ABC, NBC, CBS, you can get that with an antenna. Like just a cheap $15, $20 antenna that gets HD channels. You can connect that directly to your TV and you'll be able to get ABC, NBC, CBS, all that good stuff um, just with the antenna. So what are you paying for cable just for the sports if you can get your ABC? C Again, I don't know that much about it. So I know ESPN. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I That just went over my head. I just went over my own head with cable. Um, and a lot of people have student loans. Now, think about this. Over 90% of people that have a degree do not pursue a career in the degree that they studied. I think that we are coming to a point where companies and people... Oh, it's raining. That's what that noise was. We're getting to a point where companies are starting to not require degrees and people are starting to say a degree isn't worth it. It's not worth my future to get $100,000 in debt, it's it's basically like paying for a job. You know, you're paying $100,000 to get a $35,000 a year job. And I don't think that that's right. I'd rather just go into the interviewer and say, here is $20,000. Will you give me the job, please? And most people will. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just saying it's... it's um, rethink school. If I could go back, like, oh God, this microphone is making me so relaxed. I feel like taking a nap. If I could, go, if I could go back in time, if I could go back in time to my youth, I would become a plumber or an electrician. Plumbers, electricians, and contractors are so hard to find good ones. So hard. Joe, my contractor, I'm not letting him go. Nope. I will cook him dinner and lunch and breakfast and I will take him on e-bike rides and I'll give him back rubs. I, I'll rub his feet. I don't care. He's the best contractor I've ever, ever come across. He does an amazing job. He does it for cheap. Not cheap. He does it for, he's not trying to gouge you. He's an honest man with integrity. And it even, I think it even says that on his business card, but he is a darn good contractor. Now, if you can find a contractor that will just return your phone calls and show up when they say they will, then you do not let them go. You, you rent a room in your house to them for free rent. <laughs> you know, you just, you don't let them go. So if you want to be rich and you have the skills to be a contractor, all you have to do to be like the most successful contractor on planet earth is to show up, charge good rates. I mean, charge slightly less than market value. Don't charge like $500 an hour. You know, don't, don't charge people $25,000 for a roof that costs you $2,000 in material. That's ridiculous and takes you two days to complete. You know, charge, I don't know, a hundred bucks an hour in today's dollars, charge a hundred bucks an hour do good work, return phone calls and show up. And I swear to God, you will never be out of work. You will be so busy and you'll, people won't let you retire. People will be like, no, I'll give you anything you want. Just come back, build my fence, put up drywall, install my cabinets, please. I'm begging you. I'm begging you to lift my ceiling. You know what I'm saying? So being a contractor, and it's the same with plumbers and electricians. I mean, just installing people's water heaters and upgrading electrical, like this is, it's legit. Like you will make a killing doing that. You don't have to be an electrical engineer. You don't have to be a doctor or a dentist. Like there are jobs out there that take six months of schooling. You get your license or, or you become a whatever that w word is where you work under somebody, an apprentice or something. Like, yeah, you, you will make a living and or you will make a killing is what you'll do. Especially if you start your own business. Oh my goodness. I've been talking for so long. I'm so sorry. But yeah, that's another thing about thinking outside the box and frugality is just 
financial efficiency. So when it comes to the way that your finances work, you've got in your house and outside your house. If you can take all of your in-house and make them as low as possible, then you can increase the stuff outside the house or you can make these as low as possible and then learn on the outside of your house. So instead of going to the movies and a coffee and a dinner, you know, you make your own coffee at home and you go for a walk in the park or you go to the library. There are tons of free stuff, free things to do out there. Instead of going to a financed concert, you look up free concerts in your area. Instead of going to the museum, you look up free days at the museum in your area. Um, Instead of going and renting a boat for $1,000 a day, uh, you start looking into maybe a kayak or a canoe. You can even get, you can even put little motors on kayaks. They're, they're so cute. Uh, but there are certain kayaks where you can put little motors on. You can even go and say, okay, well, be honest with yourself. Am I going to go fishing every single day? Or is this something that I just want to get out of my system for this year? You can go and buy a blow up raft for $40 and float down the river and then just get out of the raft and let it keep floating and you got your money's worth. Or you can bring it home and do it again. <laughs> But there are so many free things to do. I mean, so many free things. The, the list doesn't end. I mean, if you think of, you know, parks, city parks nowadays are setting things up for people to do for free, making them hubs again. In the 80s and 90s, people spent all their times at the malls, but people are getting past that and doing more shopping online, and so parks and recreation are making things a little bit more interesting at your local parks. So they are upgrading the playgrounds. They have are building skate parks for the skaters and um, rollerbladers and stuff like that, and they're keeping them in really good condition. And then when it comes to other parts of the park, they are building those Frisbee cage things that... They're, they look, they have a cage. Anyway, there's, Frisbee's a whole, like, literally gay. I, all I know how to do with a Frisbee is play catch. But these are different types of Frisbee. It's like Frisbee disc uh, fancy stuff. <sighs> Microphone. All right, so, and then they ha- now have bocce ball courts at a lot of public parks. Bocce ball courts. I'm not a bocce ball fan, but I have played it, and you know, a set of bocce will set you back 50 bucks for a set to play for the rest of your life. Uh, horseshoes. There's always, there's always horseshoes in pretty much every park I see. I don't know how to play horseshoes, but I know that it takes horseshoes and you could probably go out to a farm and get some horseshoes for free, but I'm sure that a set of horseshoes intended for the game of horseshoes can't cost more than 50 bucks, right? So you've got bocce ball horseshoes, basketball courts, a basketball is what, 10 bucks? Or at a thrift store, like a dollar? You've got uh, football. A lot of people like to play catch with the football at the park. You've got baseball, softball, tennis courts. Tennis, There's tennis courts all over the place. I suck at tennis, but I was pretty good at racquetball. Weird. I can't play against a person, but I can play against a wall in a person. <laughs> So yeah, racquetball, a ball in a racket, you can get at a thrift store for a dollar ball, a racquetball. I think they come in sets of like three for like five bucks. Soccer, a soccer ball is $10 and you can play with like 10 different people. I mean, there's so many things. And then that doesn't even count walking trails, hiking trails biking trails. So if you have a bicycle, you can go mountain biking pretty much any time. Uh, personally, I've got the e-bikes and there is no, there is no end to what an e-bike can do. I still have so many trails I need to not study, (laughs) explore. I need to explore so many things. Ugh. If only my best friend Joe didn't work all the time. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so um, there's a million different things that you can do that cost no money, you know, or very little money. 
libraries always have a nice collection of DVDs. So if you, you know, if you don't have it on DVD already, you can rent it from the library. Bag of popcorn, you know, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous how free and cheap and negotiable different things are. You can go to church. Church is entertainment. They play music. You get to worship. Uh, fellowship. You get to talk to people. You can volunteer at food banks, animal shelters. You can walk dogs. There's just so many different things. The list, there's too many in the list. There's also, I, I think I've mentioned free fishing days. So there's free fishing days in every state. So if you like fishing, but you don't want to shell out the 50 bucks a year for a fishing license, there's usually one or two days a year where you can go fishing for free. So that's something to do. But I think that a lot of people look at frugality as being deprived and going without, living without, you know, not having the newest, nicest furniture and stuff. Now look behind me. I don't have like the newest, nicest furniture, but does does the shape of a coffee table really bother me? No. It's used to hold my remote controls. I don't even know why I have this chair. This chair I only have because nobody else wanted it. I mean, <clears throat> what? even when I have guests, they never sit in that chair. That chair is pretty much Nala's and I just push it up against the window so she can look out the window every day. But like, even when I have guests, they never sit in that chair. Never. Like, why do people even have those chairs? I don't understand. It's pretty much just there for show. So, I always digress when I do this. And again, the microphone is really making me relaxed. Like, seriously, I feel relaxed. It's almost like when I have the regular microphone that is just attached to my lapel, my hands are free and it makes me um, move back and forth. And the microphone is making me focus on the microphone and my hands are right there on the desk because I feel like I have to be in front of the microphone. I think this is making me focus and relax. You guys tell me. <clears throat> so yes, financial efficiency. Now, when it comes to cooking, I'll, I'll use an example as what, what I made last night and today. I made a video a while back about all this meat that I got. And, and I go shopping for meat about once every six months. And I got, what was it? Chicken thighs, I believe. No, not thighs. It was like thigh and drumstick for 50 cents a pound. Now I don't like dark meat the way that it is. So what I did is I put it last night. I took three of those. I, I vacuum sealed all of them in separate packages with three per package. So I took all I took one package and I thawed it out and then I put it in a crock pot with water and then I turned it into pretty much like pulled pork or pulled chicken, right? Now this does several different things. First of all, it makes it taste better. But second of all, okay, I don't want to digress too much. That is partially dog food and partially my food. So what I did is I took my McCormick taco seasoning that I got for like 15 cents forever ago because they do go on sale. But uh, I took my taco seasoning. So I took one pound of that ground chicken, or not ground, shredded, shredded chicken. I took a pound of the shredded chicken and a half of a red bell pepper that I had left in the fridge that cost 83 cents per bell pepper. So like 41 cents worth of bell pepper. Um, I took some lettuce from my garden and a half an onion and a can of corn. And then I put it all together and I made a huge batch of chicken tacos. Huge batch. It's going to make 20 tacos, like huge. And then the other half, and that's only using half the meat, not even half. I used one pound of meat and there was probably three pounds in there. Now, when it comes to the dog food, people always ask me about why isn't your dog food in or your dog's monthly in your monthly budget because they eat what I eat they get table they get non-seasoned table scraps now that 
pulled chicken or pulled pork, whatever you want to call it, the pulled chicken. And then I made rice. And, um, when I make my soy milk, there is a after, I don't know what to call it. It's, it's bean pulp. It's called okara. And I add rice and the bean pulp together and sometimes beans, whatever, whatever I'm eating. Uh, and I add a little bit of bacon grease because I save bacon grease and I have jars and jars of it. And, but that, that chicken that I made and in, made into pulled pork, I saved the chicken. It would be essentially chicken soup. I changed, I saved that. So now the dogs are getting a mixture of shredded chicken, rice, okara, and like chicken soup. So that's their food for the next week. And it's my food for the next week too. And not the, ch- the dog, like, so mine is made into chicken tacos. So I've got two separate things, chicken tacos and then dog food. And every time I make dog food, I just heat it up for a minute and then it, the dogs get it. So, and I do keep kibble on hand, but it's very rare that I use it. I use it like when I'm lazy or when I'm tired or I don't want to make anything. So if I make hash browns and eggs, the dogs get hash browns and eggs. They get unseasoned hash browns and eggs. If I make uh, tacos, they get their portion of the tacos unseasoned. So the dog's food is in my food budget, you know, and there's tons of things that dogs can eat that humans eat, but there's a lot of things that they can't. So dogs can't eat grapes or onions or mushrooms. You just have to be careful with what is in your stuff and what you have to keep it separate from your dogs. And my dogs are healthy and happy. They're at a very good weight. And their dog food doesn't really cost me anything. And then people talk about them being in my budget. I'm like, I don't think you guys understand how my budget works. My budget must work different than anybody's. (coughs) Excuse me. My budget works very different than anybody's. So my dogs are included in my budget. Stop. Come here. What are you barking at? Hey, no barking. You're going to put your collar on. No barking. No barking. No barking. Okay? Okay? No barking. One thing I did have to purchase for the dogs recently was some Frontline. It was $25 for three doses each. So it was $50 for, for three doses for each dog. Um... But that's not something that's in my budget. I simply have two accounts. I have a month, I have like an account that I, maybe it's, that's a whole, I think that's a whole other video I need to go into because it's like, it's so simple, but it's so complicated at the same time. And it's hard to explain without like pictures. So I need to drop it. This has been an hour long video, folks. It's because of the microphone. I think I should have gotten a microphone a long time ago. So yeah, I was taking the dogs for a walk and Nala had had ticks on her. And I, I think I've been picking them off of her. Like every time I take her for a walk, it's like three or four ticks. And then last night was like the last straw. I was petting her and I saw one on her neck and she couldn't get it. And it was, thank goodness, it hadn't burrowed into her yet, but... I was like, okay, yep, nope. I'm going to not be doing this manually anymore. I'm getting a flea and tick thing. So I got her some Frontline, and that was $50. But uh, again, that's not part of my budget. My budget is like monthly emergency and everything else. Like I don't do sinking funds. I don't do a sinking fund for a car or a house or a dog or a dental. Like that's not how I work. I've got... I pay all of my expenses on a credit card and then I just pay my credit card off every month or not even every month, every two weeks. And then I've got my other stuff, which is like a huge savings account that I increase and I increase until I hit a certain amount. And then I, I just, you know what? I don't even want to get into the amount because then people get angry at me. (laughs) You have too much money. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I save too much, but If I have an emergency, if I need a new car, if my dog needs a surgery, if I need a surgery, if uh, my dogs need some front line, if I want to buy a new couch, if I need to remodel my kitchen, it all comes out of here. 
The rest is just monthly. So when people talk about budgeting, I don't budget. Be, I, I don't budget things like other people because I just spend so little of my income that I don't have to worry. I spend maybe 10% of my income every month. The rest of it just gets saved and saved and saved and saved because I don't spend it. I live on so stinking little and people get so upset at me for living on so little. So my finances are minimal and uncomplicated. Don't be mad at me for that. You know, try and get to that point too because it's stress-free living. It's stress-free finances. I just pay my I just pay my bills as they come in and then if I need more money it's in that other account. So if I have to go to the dentist or dog or whatever, that's where I get it. Okay, folks. I hope that this video has been helpful. And if you guys like the microphone method, one hour long vlogs, please let me know because I rather enjoyed this microphone session quite a bit. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper puts this out.